Good afternoon and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Wednesday, July 23rd, 2015, and we're honored to have in the studio with us marriages. Live with marriages. 
Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the studio. Welcome back, Emma. Uh, thank you guys very much for coming out and performing for us. Um, I read just in an interview that there's a possible marriages art book in the works. Is that a real idea moving forward on that at all? It is. Sweet. Yeah, and we, we actually we had some prints that will end up in that art book on this tour. Okay. Uh, but we sold out of them. So yeah, we're, we're piecing it together. And uh, what's what's the concept of it? I guess it just follows the the story of the record. It's sort of going to be, I think, a combination of the art that we've made um, surrounding the band, the collaborations we've all done with photography and um, the album artwork, and sort of outtakes from that um, and things that are inspired by the songs. It's something we wanted to have done by this tour, but. Uh, ended up with the prints, which came out really great. Greg made them. Cool. What uh, what is each of your like, I don't know, signature medium or or something that you like to work with best? Mostly photography related stuff, or? Um, <clears throat> for me, it is photography. Uh, yeah, em Emma does quite a, a a lot of artwork outside of that. Um, so yeah, I, I think for for me that's it. But she does a lot of painting and and sketches, drawings, and photography as well. And Andrew's an, an artist, too. You yeah, know. Andrew, what do you do? Or what do you like to use? Uh, I work in various mediums, but, you know, crayons are fun. <laughs> I know where I default to. How do you get the best ones? Uh, Crayola Fresh Box? Oh, with I melt my own, actually. Oh, yeah, the there we go, man. Yeah. <laughs> get your own, like, super nice, uh, Denny's super nice they gear. Oh, yeah, actually. Denny's. Yeah, or Cracker oh. Barrel. I think they have pretty great ones, too. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can uh, roll into your next track when you're ready.
Yes. You're watching Audio Tree Live. We're here with Marriages. They're playing a bunch of U.S. tour dates, so you can check them out, like, all over the place. Um, with Creepoid until August 13th, and the newest record, Salome, is out now. You can get it, you know, support the band by getting a record and going out to their shows. Um, uh, Emin, Greg, well, uh, all of you, if you wouldn't mind talking to me a little bit about that character, I just, you know, went to Wiki and then kind of expanded as far as the, the Salome will go, and, and it's like that femme fatale in, in like the Bible. There's, you know, Oscar Wilde. There's tons of painters that use it as imagery, ballets, all sorts of stuff. Uh, would you just talk about what it means in terms of this record and maybe your inspiration from it? Um, well, it was sort of just a confluence of things, I think lyrically, as the record was coming together. Um, and even in the artwork, uh, the, she just kept appearing, and we, I, you know, we ended up calling this one of the songs Salome, and, and all those other things surrounding it made sense for her to sort of be the figurehead of the music, and I think there's a lot of themes which do surround her in the music itself. Um, I mean, I like to leave a lot of it up to other people's interpretation. Sure. As it, I have my own ideas about it, but... Um, yeah. Yeah, Greg. Anything else on that? Or not so Andrew? much. I mean, I yeah, I, <clears throat> I think we followed Emma's lead on that, but it did. It, it just kind of sort of came up through, like she said, yeah, through the music, through the artwork, and until it got to a point where it just had taken shape. We all want to end up with someone's head on a silver platter, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. Um, as far as performance-wise, Emma, for you, you know, when you were last in here, it was solo, and that's it's a very different thing, both musically, atmospherically. But as far as a performer, do you think about the way you're performing differently in this group, besides the fact that there are two other people on stage, but kind of like your your manner on stage at all? Um, I think there's a little bit more rocking out that goes on just okay. because there's drums and bass happening. Um, and it allows me to play less guitar, actually. Right. I think there's not as much frequency to fill out. Um, you know, and there's a collaborative energy that's happening that has to be att attended to. So not as much just going off into, you know, we have song structures and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like being able to follow each other's lead kind of versus it being all, you know, yeah. on your shoulders or whatever. Yeah, it's... It's a group dynamic. Yeah. Uh, on tour, you know, we were talking about food a little bit and getting as good of food as you possibly can. But uh, besides music, do you guys listen to anything else to pass the time? Like, I don't know, podcasts or news stuff? We actually like listen to more podcasts okay, than we cool. do music. We, we don't really listen to much music in the van. Yeah. Or I, there's a lot of the sort of the NPR-based podcasts, Radio Lab, This American Life, Invisibilia, that type of stuff. Yeah. What about you? Do you He's got uh, his headphones. one preference? I just, I just go headphones. I don't talk to them. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> you just sit, sit in there. Live There's in nothing your own on ears. the headphones. Just yeah, yeah, they're just covering your it's ears. Just, you know, I found that people will bother you a lot less on the red line if you have your headphones on, even if you're not listening to anything. Yeah. It's like a way to sort of deter people. They think that you're busy list educating yourself or whatever, but you're really just people watching with like a, a helmet on, you know, but it's just on your ears. Awesome. All right. Uh, why don't you guys go into your next track? Okay. You cool, Greg?
watching Audio Tree Live. We're here with Marriages. I think you guys did a really impressive job on the record of making tracks that stand out um, separate from one another, but also the flow is really natural. Like the, the order of tracks is really natural. So I'm curious how much time you took into actually organizing them on the record or if that was important to you at all. Uh, it was. We yeah, took a was. lot of time. To okay, <laughs> cool, yeah. We are on tour and I remember just, yeah, there's a lot of conversation around the order of the record. Um, but I think we're all really happy with the way it flows now. Yeah. yeah. Were there a bunch of different variations uh, before the final release? I mean... Yeah, we would come up with these alternate playlists that basically um, laid out the record in different ways and just listen over and over. And I think at that point, we had heard the song so many times and we're all feeling a little, just a little burnt that it sure. became this sort of cloudy haze of what is this record actually going to sound like? You know? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it wasn't until much later that listening to the record and listening to the order of the tracks that I felt like we, like, okay, we, we made the right choices here, you know? Yeah. And there's only so much time you can fit onto a vinyl. So that's right. sort of what your limitations are. And we had, you know, there's two songs that didn't end up there. Right. So yeah, many iterations. Sure. And as far as that goes, I mean, you're limited by the time, but do you feel like you were able to say everything you wanted to say? And uh, it was nine, right? It's it's nine and then 11 with the bonus? or Yeah, so yeah. there's some secret secret words that didn't make it onto the record. <laughs> sure. And I think that those excluded tracks make sense on their own and sort of were the odd, odd birds. Yeah, we struggled with it a little bit because, you know, do we use it as bonus tracks or is B-side, like, seven-inch stuff, but, you know, would those songs really stand alone as a marriages track on, on a split seven-inch or something? It it didn't really seem like uh, like that would work as well because sure. they are so so different. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it made sense that way. Yeah, and so then in this way, they're sort of like expanded universe or auxiliary stuff to the record. If you want to hear more or want to hear, like, more insight from you guys, you can follow those instead. Yep. Yeah, sweet. All right, uh, thank you guys very much for playing for us. Why don't you go into your last track? Okay.
This is Audio Tree Live. We've been in the studio with marriages. Before we close out and let you guys go, I'm just curious if there's an effect that's like super prevalent in your live performance, maybe a pedal you can't leave home without or something about your setup that you have to have. Um, <clears throat> I've kind of, I've really narrowed it down to the three things that do all matter. Uh, the the full tone bass drive is, is yeah, just the, my be best distortion. Um, I guess I could live without the the boss whammy, but it's it's pretty critical. But the line six M nine, although I think if I were to take any one effect, I'm not. I could find a better delay, sure, or whatever. But it really just um, it it gives me everything I need in one pedal. Right. So yeah, it's you know I try to keep it pretty straightforward. For sure. Yeah. Emma. Uh, I'm like getting to the point where I'm starting to get really weird about telling people. Well, my pedals are. Like okay, well, you can keep it. You can you can keep it a secret. I know. I it's, don't it's, mind. I know it's weird. It's actually the <laughs> electro harmonic stereo memory man with Hazari is the pedal. That is the pedal okay. for me. Um, yeah, and this boss uh, digital delay. It has like a, it has a modulated reverb. Sweet. Those are the two things that I really would be very sad if I lost. I've gone through three of these electro harmonic pedals. So. But I am getting really into the uh, Earthquaker stuff. They sent me this Arrows, which is a clean boost. It's for me, it's a clean boost, and it's I've searched for a clean boost forever, and this is this is the one. So I'm I'm kind of in love with it at the moment, and cool. they also make an Afterneath that is amazing. Sweet. Yeah, we've been. I use uh, I play pedal steel too, although not not in this project. I've been using a lot of the reverbs and delays, which are just really well made and. and lush and, and beautiful sounding. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Andrew, for you, anything? I mean, uh, obviously you're playing our house kit right now, but. Right. Which well, there's cool. one thing, I don't know if the cameras can pick it up, but it's the specific pair of underwear that I have on right now. <laughs> they might they might be able to. They have really good uh, vision stuff, you know? What, see. what he doesn't know is that I actually switched underwear with him right before we started playing, and oh. you still played well, so. Placebo. Yep. I don't know about that. I switched him back. <laughs> While we were playing, uh -huh. I was wondering what that was. Uh, after their U.S. tour, they're also playing Arc Tangent and then one U.K. Uh, date with Deaf Heaven. So you can check them out if you're in around there. Thank you guys very much for Thanks performing. So much for Thanks, man. Us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks Thank to you awesome people in the studio and sound engineers, camera and lighting crew, making it look beautiful and viewers. Thanks for watching. You can support the band by downloading the session when it comes out in a few weeks and send a shout via social media to us or the band if you just want to connect. From all of us here at the Audio Tree Studios, thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.